Hi, everybody. It's Dee Slater with Create with D, and welcome to our week three of focusing on easel cards. I've got a really fun one here tonight. I think they're all fun. I think easels are just that. They're a fun fold and something that's a little different um, that you can do. I have been making two of them. You know, I make my sample one and then I make one here during our lives and I share one with my mom and she said it perfectly this week. She's like, I like these cards that I can stand up and enjoy before we sent, before I send them out. And so she's had the last two weeks, she's got both of those easel cards up and enjoying them. And I think that's just the whole purpose of the easel cards is that you can sit them out and enjoy them. So as you're coming on here tonight, um, please say hi if you like, um, comment. I will be doing a drawing. And so I'm going to give away one of these to um, a comment, um, you know, someone that um, leaves a comment. And so um, leave comments throughout um, as often as what you'd like for to increase your chances to win if you want. Hi, Marge. And um, they will bail out the card of the sample that we make here tonight. Um, it needs to be a U.S. Um, address that I send it to. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started making um, tonight's easel card. Go ahead and switch the views. Okay. So this is an easel card that I have not made before. And it is called a reverse easel card. So when you prop it up this is the the easel so typically we fold it not away from the fold but we fold it inward like we've done the last couple of times um, so this one's called uh, again it's a reverse easel card um, I'm like kind of a little bit on a mission to get um, more um, all-purpose cards um, I was looking through, I needed to send some to nephews and my dad, and I wanted to send one to my uncle who was going through some things. And all of them are very, um, you know, girly. I just tend to stamp that way. And so um, I am going, you'll probably see me do a little more um, blues and greens and those such of things so that I can incorporate some for all of the people in our lives, not just the girl types. Hi, Rita. Oh, good. I'm glad you need all-purpose ones, too. All right. Um, this card, it kind of, like, it starts out basically with a Z fold. So let's go ahead and we'll bring in the card bases and everything. All right. So I'm using the Mint Macaron cardstock. And then I'm also using paper that's from the Abstract Beauty. And our big um, easel element here is going to be from the scallop contour dies. Okay. So for this card, um, again, it kind of starts out with a traditional Z fold layout. So this is cut at, or the card base is eight and a half by five and a half. And along the eight and a half side, we're going to score it at two and an eighth and four and a quarter. So let's go ahead and we'll get those burnished and fold this away. So this would just be a Z fold, right? But it, it also is the same fold that we're going to use to make our reverse easel card. And I did want to do it in um, this um, orientation this time um, versus um, you can still do the same thing if you cut it at four and a quarter by five and a half, but I haven't made one with this kind of a layout and this orientation of the Z fold and the easel card. So we're just kind of playing around all sorts of ways with our different um, layout options. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll add some designer paper to it. Again, I'm using the Abstract Beauty. Um, this layering piece is cut at five and a quarter by one and seven eighths. And we'll go ahead and we'll get that glued down. So I'm using multi-purpose glue. Get this on. So this is just cut a fourth of an inch smaller than what the area is here. 
that just leaves, that's such a nice and neutral palette, I think. Abstract Beauty, it comes um, a four by six. So the largest that you can have on any one you know, side on the short side is four inches. So I just cut a little bit off of the end. And so this is four by five and a quarter. This would be a pretty side too. It's so hard on this paper to decide what side to use. But again, I was going something more all purpose. Okay, and we'll get that down. This is going to go here. Sometimes I like to close it up and make sure I have the designer paper lined up good. And that looks pretty good. Whoops, I'm a little off. Let's get that lined up just a little better. Okay. So um, what I um, am using here tonight is the ice cream builder punch. It is going to be retiring. And um, I didn't notice at the time when I did it, I knew that the sweet ice cream was going to retire as well, but it is absolutely sold out. So at the end, I will have other um, options here that you could use to get kind of the same look. All right, so for this reverse easel, we need um, you know a nice big sentiment on it, and or a nice big um, easel kind of proper upper thing. And so this is a wonderful um, size here on the scallop um, the scallop die for to do that. Goodness, sometimes I get so tongue-tied. I know what I'm supposed to say, but my brain just won't quite work all the way. And I don't know if you can tell on my sample here, but I stamped this in the mint macaron, and then on purpose, I kind of offset it a little bit with the crumb cake, I thought I'd try to give it a little bit of a shadow. I'm not sure if I'm 100% thrilled with it. So on this sample here, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it with our, our mint macaron. And this is, um, you know, it says happy birthday. I'll go ahead and we'll get that inked up. And I'm going to put this towards the top. And we'll get that stamped. All right. So now we know it's happy birthday and I'm going to get my um, whisper white or my whisper white. I'm gonna get my basic white scrap pieces of cardstock here. And I'm going to use the balmy blue. So I kind of have balmy blue and mint macaron as the primary colors here. And I'm going to get the matching ice cream, kind of the scoop top here. And I need three images. So I'll go ahead and ink that up three times. And again, I'm going to um, kind of show you another option that you can have. As you can see, this is, um, you know, variated on, um, on the stamp on purpose. There is a lot of those type of stamps um, within our um, collection of stamps. So like, for example, if you wanted to, you could take the um, painted poppy and use this stamp and stamp that and then just use the punch image to punch out. And then, whoops, I forgot to tell you on the birthday, you could use Biggest Wish and stamp happy birthday and get the same look. So you probably can replicate this with some stamps that you have in your collection. Right, I'll get these out of the road here. And we'll get in our punch. And we'll go ahead and we'll get these punched three times. See if I have better luck punching this week than what I did last. I was like, I just cracked myself up last week when I, didn't have those quite spaced just right. We'll get our ice cream pops punched. And um, I mentioned at the beginning that um, if you want to comment um, along the way, I will be giving away one of the cards tonight in a drawing based on um, comments. So I'll just do a random generator um, to pick the winner. And punch, whoops. So we need three of our ice cream cones. 
right? And then we're going to get three of our bases. Um, and I'm using crumb cake paper, scrap on crumb cake. And let's see here. So we'll go the opposite way. Same thing you could do, um, you know, that same, um, what I want to say, background stamp on something else that kind of has that and then punch with it. Or for the ice cream cone, I've done this before. I've punched out the cone and, um, and then run it through an embossing folder. So, and it gives texture to the cone. So if you don't have the stamp set, that could be another option that you could do. I know, th well, the bundle is um, like the stamp set sold out, but the punch is still available, Rita. So we'll do that. I know it's kind of funny. It's like I look through the retired stuff and I'm like, oh, I forgot how much that I like that. Sometimes, um, you know, some of our punches and um, stamp sets can kind of get on the back burner. Oops, let me get this. Let me get some of this little straggly stuff out of my road. And punch. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, something's not going to be available. And then you kind of, um, you know, bring it back out and go, oh my gosh, I forgot how much I really enjoyed this. So this punch and um, stamp set will be something that I'll probably always keep. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and put our little ice cream cone together. And um, don't be afraid to just get the punch if you don't have it yet, because you can so um, make some cute ice cream cones even without having the stamp set. All right. So I'm putting a dimensional on the back side, on the lower um, part of the ice cream. So the center little scoop thing there. I've got it. Do that. Make three of them. Okay. And one more. A reverse easel is like if you know how easy Z folds go together. This is kind of the same way. All right. Just like um, before, um, we always need a stopper for our easel. Now on the reverse Z fold, and especially with this one, um, I found that, you know, in order to see the sentiment and everything, you really have to go pretty close to the edge on it, depending on what you have. When you close the card, unless you get a larger envelope, you really can't even go like, um, like a, your size of your stopper can't exceed your card base here. And so um, that means that you've really got to push it down towards the bottom. At least that's what I found. And so um, that's what I'm going to do with this one. This is a piece of um, cardstock. It's the balmy blue one by five and a half. And then the designer paper, the abstract beauty in that same um, kind of wide gingham pattern. This is three fourths by five and a quarter. And I've gone ahead and layered that ahead of time. And we do want this one to be raised. So I'm going to go ahead and put one on either end. And then on the side, and then on the one side, I'm going to put it um, towards the top. And the reason for that is I found, like, I want this one to be close to the edge. Um, that way, anything that, um, you know, that's going to um, act as the stopper can catch behind it. So I found that maybe putting it, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch from the side worked pretty well. I'm not going to stick it down super hard because I want to do some testing on this. All right, so next what we're going to do is put our ice cream on it. And I do want to go ahead and pop these up. So I'm going to go ahead and just put one on the, the cone itself. Maybe, yeah, if you do two, put them pretty close together. Don't get too close to the bottom. 
let's go ahead and put two on. And I'm going to kind of turn this towards me. I want this to be, and again, do it kind of lightly at first in case we have to move it up. So this is going to be where maybe you have just a smidgen overhang. Can you see how that's just overhang just a little bit? That scoop got a little crooked on there. And then let's go ahead and we'll test this one first. Okay, so here's where we want to put this where it's about halfway there. You wanna make sure that when you close it, that it all stays within the framework of the, you know, of the card base. And that was what we were doing with all of them, is just making sure that when we close it, that it closes as a standard card. So I put some liquid glue on that. I'm going to get the point of that ice cream cone down to this, pretty close to the bottom. And press. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. That's a good stopper. I'm going to get here and straighten up my sentiment here on there. It got a little crooked. I'm always um, sitting at an angle when we're doing this. And so sometimes my cards get a little wonky because they're not straight on <laughs> when I'm looking at them. Okay, we'll go ahead and get, I think that'll work great. We'll go ahead and get dimensionals on our other ones. And we'll just kind of... Again, try to keep it all so that they're even. And this is okay if these ice cream go outside the edge of our scallop because as long as it stays on the within the framework of the card overall, we're in great shape. All right, we'll do one more. So my ice cream cones aren't spaced extremely well right now. So I think I'm going to go ahead, now that I know that the stopper works, let's see here. I kind of like it when these are over just a smidgen more than what I have. Let's see if I can take that up. There, it's so cute. All right, so then um, it's just a matter of adding a few more elements to it. Ahead of time, um, I use the um, flowers of something combo ribbon. <laughs> um, I have that on our description here on the, on the um, products that were used. And I've just made a bow. I kind of did, a, I think, three loop bow. And we'll put that up here on the top. And then let's grab some rhinestones. And if you want to, you could color your rhinestones with your Stampin' Blends. Or if you had any other doodads, you could. And I forgot to stamp my um, sprinkles on there. Well, I'll add those here in just a little bit to show that we can add them later on. Get my paper piercer here. And we'll add a little bling. Get some of those going. Got that on my nail. It's been such a crazy weather here in Indiana again. I don't know that there's ever not crazy weather. We go from one extreme to another. It was actually like kind of spitting a little icy thing again today. All right. Um, the stamp set, it does have little sprinkles. And you can add sprinkles with some other little splotchy things. Like if you wanted to, like here, you know, you could do something with that. There's all sorts of little dots in some of the other stamps too. So again, I just want to encourage you that if you do want to try to replicate this set, you could. And I'm going to do the balmy blue. Again, and we'll get these on here. Whoever I send this to, I will definitely send you my original one. Some of these need stamped again. 
stamping on top of dimensionals. Sometimes it's not the wisest choice. All right, it is all sprinkled up. And so with this layout, if you did this kind of band here, this would be something that if you wanted to, you could add um, a sentiment in this strip here and make this be all of your stamping and your other, um, you know, images there. But that's our reverse easel card. So again, it basically starts out with a Z fold. And instead of putting it this flap downward, you put it out, um, out away from you. And then you get um, a little more real estate up here that you can decorate and enjoy. All right, um, that is it. Make sure that you comment. I'll probably, I know people come on um, a little later on this evening. I'll probably wait till about eight o'clock and then give people a chance to take a look at the video here today and get, and um, you know, and comment on it. And then I'll draw and we'll um, send one of these out to somebody. Um, I also wanted to mention that, um, I don't know if you had seen it on the feed, but tomorrow Stampin' Up! has a one day only free shipping. It's on order $75 or more, but then you get free shipping. So in Indiana, that's like, you know, it's 11% shipping typically, 7% tax. So it's a um, an 11% savings on all of the orders. And so if you need anything, it's a great time to do that. I have a host code that if you want to order through me, I'd appreciate it. And I'll send you a little thank you um, if you um, decide to use that host code. All right, everybody, um, have a wonderful Wednesday evening and this and enjoy our reverse easel card. Have a great night. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.